I now give the floor to Vivat International. Thank you for the opportunity to speak at the 54th session of the UN Human Rights Council. As an investigative journalist from Nigeria, my work primarily focuses on advancing transparency and accountability in government. I have repeatedly used my journalistic platform to expose and publicize malfeasance and criminal behavior by powerful people in Nigeria, most recently the new Nigerian president, Bola Tinubu, an individual whose FBI file of over 2,500 pages is said to be released publicly for the first time next month, and who has, as a matter of public record, forfeited $460,000 to the United States government, being proceeds of heroin trafficking. Due to my journalistic work, his regime has taken extraordinary steps to silence me, including a recent attempted abduction from Ghana where I have political asylum. The Tinubu regime is currently trying to prevail on Ghana, which historically is a close ally of Nigeria, to violate the non refoulement principle and have me return to Nigeria, where I would almost certainly face imprisonment, torture, and extrajudicial execution. To save my life and the important work that I do, I have been forced into a semi-nomadic lifestyle, rarely sleeping in one place for a prolonged period of time. In fact, it is from one of these temporary locations that I'm filming this message. Now, under Article 19 of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, freedom of expression is a fundamental human right. And as a journalist, I must be able to do my work without living in fear or living on the run, simply because I'm doing my job. Thank you. Spare a thought for David Ole. Understand this, truth dies in darkness. Men like David are critical for the survival of a society based on systems of rules, of morality, of equity, and justice. All he does is tell the truth. You might hate the truth he tells or you care. The young man is simply telling the truth. And you all need to understand this. If anything should happen to David, Every one of us are all responsible to make sure that whoever might get it into their stupid score to do anything to him have hopes to answer to. This will not be the more bad nonsense. I'm not, let's be clear, when I say more bad nonsense, all of you are jumping on that for different reasons without looking at the deeper issue. And I'm not ready to speak to it just yet. Nothing I say is going to do anything for more bad, he's already dead. But David is alive and well, and you all get to get this into your head. He has done nothing to deserve being handled, and you all have to get into your head. He's fighting our battles. He is fighting our battles. He sacrificed way too much already. Enough said on that subject. Wake yourselves up and understand whether you like the man or not. It's not about whether you like him. He is telling our truths. You understand? And he sacrificed a lot to do that. Get it into your head. Not all, if he was here, you probably have been picked up or something. Some of us have to be out there. He's the one out there telling our stories without having to look over his shoulder and be worrying about the Asari Dokubos of this world, the MC Mushroom became unknown gunmen, gunmen, no men. I don't care. Just get it into your head. David is fighting our battle. He's our battle. Welcome to my channel where we discuss everything and all things politics, especially about the 2023 presidential election, which was held in Nigeria on February 25, 2023, and the result controversially announced on March 1st, 2023. And that result, which did not meet the expectation of most Nigerians, was challenged by the principal actors at the presidential election petition tribunal which had given it validity on September 6, 2023. And uh, that verdict did not go down well with the petitioners, and they have taken the matter to the Supreme Court. Now, the beneficiary of that announcement on March 1st is Bola Tinubu, who was declared the winner of the election and had been sworn in since May 29 as the president of the country. He is the one running the country right now. And now, one of his major critics and one of Nigeria's most notable investigative journalists, David Hunduyin, had cried out to the international community in a previous video where he alleged that the Nigerian government, under the leadership of Bola Tinubu, want to rendition him by force from Ghana to Nigeria 
where he also alleged that if he if he was renditioned, if he is renditioned, that he don't think that he will be alive to narrate the story. He is therefore alleging threat to life and so many other things in a previous video. Now the video you watch now, the first video you watch is this same um, David Hundin, who is an award-winning investigative journalist. He's, he had the opportunity, he spoke by Zoom to the 54th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council. So it was, this session of the council was an opportunity for him to once again reiterate the danger he faced in carrying out his responsibility as a journalist. Okay, and we all know that uh, in Nigeria it is routinely said that the, uh, the media is the fourth estate of the rhyme. The media is the only occupation that was expressly recognized in the constitution because they say that the media will hold the government accountable on behalf of the people. The media will hold the government accountable on behalf of the people. The media will make the government accountable on behalf of the people. So the media, media's role is to hold the government accountable. And David Hundin, in the practice of his profession, had been acknowledged locally and internationally as one of the fearless journalists that have taken efforts, made efforts to hold Nigerian government accountable on behalf of the people. Of course, most Nigerian, Nigerian governments, like governments in Africa, and the developing world, they don't like to be held accountable. They don't like to be held accountable by the media on behalf of the people. That was why the media practitioners suffer a lot of uh, bullying, and sometimes they lose their life in the course of their duty. It was in the process of trying to protect his own life that David Hundin ran away from Nigeria and was on self-exile because since 2020, he alleged that Nigerian government was after his life because of the job that he does as a journalist. And that was what he was reinforcing in the privilege and opportunity he had to speak by Zoom to the United Nations uh, Human Rights Council to remind them of what he's passing through. So what he has also succeeded to do is to bring the international attention once again, to bring the international attention once again to his plight, to bring international attention to what is happening in Nigeria Okay, and to also to remind the world that his life is in danger. So he has succeeded in doing that and has also succeeded in internationalizing the issue of uh, Tinubu's emergence as president. You can see where he was talking about the fact that he has done so much work to expose Bola Metinubu. He reminded the United Nations Human Rights Council that the, the FBI is about to release about 2,500 uh, uh, documents they had on Bola Metinubu and that it was based on his work that this thing is coming out. And of course, we all know that he was among the two persons that filed a Freedom of Information Act request at the United, in the United States to get the FBI, to get the CIA uh, 
the internal uh, IRS, Internal Revenue Services of the United States, uh, the the Drug Enforcement Agency, and all that, to agree to make public the whatever record they had on Bolami Tribu over the years. So he was saying that this work that he does has put his life in danger and that he now moved from one place to another. He doesn't sleep in one place. He moved from one place to another just so that he could be able to protect himself, be able to be alive so that he doesn't expose himself to danger. And he has also noted that there is a, a cordial relationship between Nigeria and uh, Ghana. Okay, and being somebody who is sojourning in Ghana, uh, and the Ghanaian government may compromise and allow him to be rendered rendition, uh, which many pray that Ghana doesn't do that. So he is like also crying out to the United Nations and indeed to the whole world that look, I'm being hindered from doing my work. My life is in danger in the work that I do. And it is expected that the United Nations uh, Council on Human Rights, uh, Human Rights Council, they are going to look into his matter and see what they can do in terms of intervention. Perhaps put pressure on the Nigerian government to allow him to do his work, to not do anything to rendition him by force from Ghana or any other place he may choose to uh, go in the course of trying to be alive, to do the job that he does on behalf of Nigerian people. Because at the end of the day, who, who are the beneficiaries of the good governance David Hundin is fighting for? Is the Nigerian people, the ordinary man in the street. That's what he's fighting for. And uh, you saw the second video, that was uh, Dele Farotimi, one of the spokespersons of the P2B Presidential Campaign Council and uh, a chieftain of the Labour Party. You can see how he was emphatic that nothing should happen to David Hundie and that if something, anything happens to him, it's going to have a lot of consequences. And of course, you can see that uh, he, he was really upset about the whole uh, matter or the, 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 the effort to allegedly harm David Hundi. And he took the opportunity to also talk about the fact that uh, David Hundi has done a lot of work for Nigeria. He has risked his life. His life he has, he's the one out there saying things that people cannot say in Nigeria, reminding the international community of what needs to be done to bring good governance to Nigeria. So he his own intervention is basically to once again also remind the whole country that those who are doing this, that they better, better be advised to shelve the idea of trying to harm David Hundi or trying to do anything to him that is detrimental to his life, to the work that he does. And uh, every other thing that has to do with his work, that he should be allowed to do it. And uh, of course, from what he said there, he's also reminding the whole country of the benefits of having people like David Hundi here. Because if not for people like David Hundi, there are so many things that Nigerians will never know about their country. But this young man, has taken it upon himself to expose those things with facts and figures. So he has done a lot. In fact, you can say that it is because of David Hundien that Atiku Abakar is in the United States today trying to get documents to prove his case of allegation, uh, his case of allegation of a certificate forgery against Bola Metinubo. It's because of people like David Hundi. David Hundi and I have been doing a lot of work on this matter. 
severally if you go to his uh, youtube channel go to uh search him out in his uh, magazine west african magazine and everything else he had done so much work so much research on 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 this matter of uh, Bola Tinubu and the forfeiture of $460,000 to the United States government and all that, so much work that this man has done. And he has therefore elevated a uh, quest for good governance in Nigeria to a height that is unprecedented. I think that's what Dele. Uh, Faratimi is trying to draw attention to the fact that somebody like him uh, deserve, our, deserve the protection and not to be hunted. He deserves protection and not to be hunted because of the work he does on behalf of Nigerians, on behalf of Nigerian people. Even though uh, it's a thankless job, but at least somebody has to do it. He volunteers to do it and uh, he don't have to die in the process of doing it. In fact, he should be celebrated for having the God to do this on behalf of millions of Nigerians who are not privileged to be in his position to deliver this kind of uh, selfless service for the country. That's what Dele Farotimi is talking about there, basically. That David Hundin is doing a great work that he, he should not die he should not suffer because of this work that he does he also acknowledged that the young man had already suffered enough can you imagine moving from one country to the other just trying to uh survive not because he has done anything against the state it's just because he he had been able to say this truth as he sees it and with facts and figures, okay? And because many of the government, right from 2020, they cannot say that David Hundin had ever uh, published anything that he cannot defend. He had always been on top of his game with facts and figures, getting, getting information from sources that many of them are wondering how did he get it. This is because he's a man a young man that is dedicated to his cause and the cause is ensuring good governance in Nigeria. So uh, it's, it's an opportunity for us to also uh, acknowledge what he does for this country. That's why we are sharing this, this video. And that's why we also we brought to you for Farotimi's uh, position on this matter. And uh, we also make our own input on what we think about uh, what David Hundin is passing through and the, the life he lives now uh, because of uh, uh, being in a self-exile. You can imagine what, it, what that means, the financial implication and all that. Uh, but that is the way it is. Uh, you can only wish him the best going forward. Thank you for watching this video. And if you are new to my channel, you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel, hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, anytime I have a new video, you will be among the first to know. God bless you. And please don't forget to like this video because when you like it, Google will rank it high and recommend it for more people. Thank you and God bless you and yours.